Uh, in this tutorial, I will give an overview of how you can implement OPC UA uh, clients uh, with Visual Studio and C Sharp. We will use uh, some tools called OPC UA Server Simulator. This is a, a free OPC UA server um, that you can use for test purposes and education purposes. And we will also use uh, something called OPC UA.NET SDK. Which, will be, which we will uh, use in order to create OPC UA client with uh, Visual Studio. So here you see the contents of this uh, tutorial. First, a short introduction to OPC. And then, uh, since this tutorial is focused on OPC UA, we will also give a short overview of OPC UA. Then, how we can use OPC UA Server Simulator and how to install it. And also, um, from the same company, we have something called um, OPC UA uh, Client, which is a free tool that you can use uh, to test and communicate with uh, uh, OPC UA servers, including this OPC UA Server Simulator. And as mentioned, we will use this OPC UA.NET SDK, which is a SDK or a add-on or a package that you can use in combination with Visual Studio and C Sharp in order to create uh, both OPC UA clients, but also OPC UA servers. We will focus on creating OPC uh, UA clients in this tutorial. This is a paid software, but you can use it for free for evaluation um, with some uh, limitations. We'll uh, use this uh, SDK and we will provide some examples in Visual Studio and C Sharp. So short, uh, what is OPC? So OPC is a standard that defines uh, communication of data between different devices from different manufacturers. And you typically have an OPC server as the heart of the solution. And then you have different OPC clients that are either writing data to the server or reading data from the server. And Within OPC, we have different standards. Uh, we have something called OPC DA, which is used for uh, real-time data. And also we have something called OPC HDI for historical data. And we have also other OPC standards. In this tutorial, we will focus on the new OPC standard called OPC UA. So here you see a typical OPC scenario. Here you have an OPC server that are handling uh, the communication between the different OPC clients and store the data. So here we typically have a PLC or a SCADA system that are retrieving data from a process or controlling a process. And then typically this PLC or SCADA system sends uh, process data to the OPC server for storage. And then we can have different OPC clients that are either um, retrieving data from the server, or you can also have OPC clients that are writing data uh, to the server. So this PLC or the SCADA system here is an OPC client that are typically writing data to the OPC server. So then next, let's have a short introduction to the new OPC standard called OPC UA, which is the focus in this tutorial. So OPC UA is in short for Unified Architecture, and this is the next generation of OPC. OPC UA is uh, cross-platform, while uh, classic uh, OPC works only for Windows. You can use OPC UA on Windows, Mac OS, uh, Linux on other devices like PLCs, embedded systems, etc. It's based on a modern software uh, network architecture, so uh, there is no DCOM um, problems involved with uh, OPC UA, which we typically have in classic OPC uh, implementations. So this makes it easier to, uh, to, to send data uh, from uh, the OPC server to different OPC clients or retrieve data from the OPC server uh, in a network or over internet. 
So for a classic OPC, yeah, both the server and the clients needed to be Windows, um, based on the Windows operating system, while for the new OPC UA, you can have either the server or clients using Windows, Linux, or some kind of an embedded system, like you see in this case. So here the OPC UA server is implemented in an embedded system, and then you have different OPC UA clients, which could be an ordinary Windows computer, it could be an embedded system, etc. And also another benefit with OPC UA, while we have for classic OPC, we have different uh, protocols like OPC DA, OPC historical data, and OPC alarm and events, etc. For OPC UA, all these three um, standards are put into one standard, namely the OPC UA. So with OPC UA, you can retrieve real-time data, you can also retrieve historical data. So in order to test the OPC UA clients we are going to create in this tutorial, we will use the OPC UA service simulator. So this OPC UA service simulator is a free OPC UA server tool that supports uh, uh, data access, OPC, um, what we call OPC DA, uh, but in an OPC UA sense and also it supports historical data access. Um, so you can use it basically to retrieve uh, real-time data and also historical data. With this um, tool, it's free, but of course it has limited features because it's free and you typically use it for test purposes and for educational purposes. But with this tool, you can configure your own tags um, using a CSV file so you just open this CSV file in, for instance, Excel, and then you can set up and configure the tags available on the server. You can download and find more information about this tool on this uh, link. So here is the, um, is the website, website for OPC Foundation, where you find information about this OPC UA server simulator and you can click on this product website in order to install uh, this uh, software. And also here you find user guides, etc. how to use this tool, but we will also demonstrate this tool, of course, in this tutorial. So here you see the vendor's uh, web page where you can uh, download this OPC UA service simulator. Click on the download link in order to download it. You find the user guide. You find also some videos here that demonstrates this uh, system. And here you see when you have installed this software, it looks like this. So you just open it and then um, the software looks like this. And when you uh, connect different clients to this, uh, this uh, tool, you, they will pop up here. And as mentioned, you can configure uh, the tags that are available for this OPC UA server simulator using a CSV file. So this file called address space.csv can be used to, um, to create and configure the tags that are available for this OPC UA server. These files are located on this location. So here you see the, uh, these two files that are included. So by default, there are 20 tags available. Tag 1 to 10 is read-write, and tag 11 to 20 is read-only. And you also see here the data type. But you can add more tags, you can configure the data type, access level, etc. But I will just use the default settings and use the default tags available. So in uh, this tutorial, we will also use a tool called OPC UA Client. This is a free OPC UA Client that you can use for test purposes and for educational purposes. So we will use this tool in order to, to test and make sure that our OPC UA Client created in uh, Visual Studio are working as expected. Um, here you see the web page where you can uh, download this um, this software. 
So this is the web page for the vendor. So you just click on the download or you can click on the user guide, etc. in order to find out more about this, uh, this software. But basically here you see the OPC UI client tool. You can click on this icon in order to connect to the OPC UA server. Then you just enter the URL for the OPC UA server here and then click apply in order to connect to that specific OPC UA server. And when you are connected to a specific OPC UA server, you will find the available tags here in this window. So as you see here, we have a tag from 1 to 20. And these are the tags that are available on this uh, OPC UA server simulator. So then you can click on a specific tag, either read or write in order to read data from, uh, from the server or write a new value or a specific tag. You can also click monitor here in order to subscribe to a specific tag. And then uh, the tag will pop up here in this list with the value, uh, timestamp, etc. So then let's start with the main part of this tutorial, namely how to create OPC UA clients with C Sharp and uh, Visual Studio. Uh, so uh, there exist lots of different packages or libraries that you can use in order to create both OPC UA clients and OPC UA servers with Visual Studio and C Sharp. Most of them are payment based, so you need to pay for them. Uh, or you can use many of those in an evaluated uh, form or a trial period. Uh, in this tutorial, we will use something called OPC UA.NET SDK, which can be used to create both OPC UA clients and OPC UA servers. So then let's see how we can um, get started with this OPC UA.NET SDK uh, in combination with Visual Studio and C Sharp. First, you need to download this package. This uh, OPC UA.NET SDK is, comes in a form of a NuGet package, so you can basically uh, install it from your Visual Studio editor. But also, it's a good idea to go to the web page of the vendor. Here you will find lots of information about this OPC UA.NET uh, SDK. You find lots of examples, etc. But basically, and this is a paid software, but you can use it in an evaluation modus. This means that you can use the software for an unlimited time, but you can only run it for 30 minutes before you have to restart your application. Then let's start with a practical example using Visual Studio and C Sharp. So here you see the, um, the application that will be demonstrated. So this application has been created with Visual Studio using this um, OPC UA uh, SDK for .NET. So uh, this is a simple demonstration of the, this SDK where you can here have an ordinary text box. You enter a value and then click write OPC in order to write this value to, the, to an OPC UA server. We will use this OPC UA server simulator. Then next you can click on this button, read OPC, uh, and then you will read the same value from the OPC server and hopefully you will get the same value as you enter here, because here you write to the server and here you read to the from uh, the OPC UA server. So, uh, so you have to notice that this example is a very simplified example in order to demonstrate the basic principle of writing data to an OPC UA server and reading data from an OPC UA server. Typically you have write and read. Uh, in, in this example you have write and read in the same application, but in a real world uh, scenario this doesn't make any sense because typically you have OPC clients that are distributed in a network or even over internet and typically you have a, uh, you can have a, an OPC write client on one computer and then you have, can have an OPC read client on another uh, computer and somewhere these two applications are communicating with an OPC US server. So typically you have the server and the clients distributed over an over a local network or over internet. 
So in order to st uh, get started with this uh, OPC UA.NET SDK in Visual Studio on C Sharp, you just start creating a Windows Forms application in Visual Studio. And as you see here, uh, this is a Windows uh, Form application. And then you just uh, right click on the project and then select new get packages and then you will get this window and then you just search for opc ua and then you will find this opc.uafx.client which you can uh, click on and just select install in order to install this package and then you are ready to use uh, this um, opc ua.net sdk in visual studio and in c sharp so now I have opened my Visual Studio and then I just select create new project. I use an ordinary Windows Forms application project. I select this one, click next. And then you need to specify a name. So I just specify a location on my hard drive. So I just select a temporary folder. And then I name it OPC UA or something and then click select folder and then you need to specify a name for the project I can call it OPC UA application and then click next and I select the latest uh, .NET framework and click create in order to create this project in Visual Studio so it takes some time to create the project and then by default it creates this form.1 which you can use in order to create our uh, graphical user interface. So the first thing we need to do, uh, to do is to include this uh, NuGet package. So then I just right click here on the project, select manage NuGet packages and here under browse I can just type OPC UA and then it will find available packages. So we will use this one OPC dot uh, UAFX dot client and I just click install and click OK. And then this package will be installed in my project. So here under uh, dependencies packages this uh, package for creating uh, OPC UA clients has been created. Then I can just double click on my form in order to start creating my application and then as mentioned we will use a, sorry, um, a text box. So here we can enter a value that you are going to write to the OPC uh, server and we need a new text box in order to retrieve a value from the server. And then we need two buttons. One that are writing to the server and another one that, does, that are reading from the OPC UA server like this. Then I just need to name the different uh, objects here. Let's start with this button. I just name it button opc right like this and then I can have a name for it instead of button one I just type right like this and the same for this one I can call it button opc read and the name that should be present on the button is just read like this and the same for the text, bo uh, text boxes here txt you see data write or something and here txt you see data read so now I have the different um, objects, two text boxes and two buttons. And then I can just double click here on the right button. And then I can create the code for communicating with the OPC UA server and 
writing a specific value here in this button, OPC write, uh, click event handler. First thing we need to do is to include this uh, proper namespace. So then we just use using OPC dot UAFX dot client like this. So now we are ready, um, ready to use uh, this SDK in our C Sharp application. So in order to save some so save some time, I have copied in the necessary code in order to make this work. So inside this OPC write button event handler, I have copied in the necessary code in order to connect to the OPC UA server and write a value that you specify in this uh, text box. So basically, let's go through the code. So first, you need to create a, a string called OPC, UA, OPC URL, which is the U URL or the address to the OPC uh, UA server. So in this example, we will use this OPC UA server simulator, which is located on the same computer as the client in this case. So then I use localhost, and this is the port for this specific OPC UA server. Then I need to specify the specific tag name. In this specific example, I will use tag number seven. And then we need to create an object of this uh, OPC uh, client. And then we need to use this object in order to connect to the server using client.connect. Then I assume here in uh, this um, form, I assume you are entering a temperature value here. So then I just create a variable of double called temperature. And then I put the value you, you enter in this text box into the variable temperature using convert dot to double. And this is the text box dot text. And then I use client.write node, which is a built-in function in this um, OPC UA.NET SDK. Um, and you use this write node in order to write a specific value to the server. So then you specify as an argument for this method, which is the tag name, which I have specified here, and the value, which is stored in this temperature variable. And then I just use Client dot disconnect in order to disconnect from the server. So basically, this is how you write a specific value to an OPC uh, UA server. Then we do almost uh, identical for uh, for this other one here. We are going to retrieve the value from the OPC server when you click this read button. So then I just double click on this button in order to create an an event handler for this uh, button. Then I just copy in some code I have made, which is almost identical. So you have to remember this code is to is very simplified in order to demonstrate how you write and read from an OPC UA server using Visual Studio and this uh, OPC UA.NET SDK. We will improve the code later, step by step. But basically here in this uh, read uh, event handler, you specify uh, the same here, the URL for the OPC UA server, the tag name. We create a client and connect to the client. And then we use read node in order to read a specific value from a specific tag. And then put the value into this temperature variable and then I con convert this value to a text and put it into this um, text box which you find here. So basically that's all you need in order to create an application in C Sharp where here I'm writing to the OPC UA server and here I'm reading from the OPC UA server. So before we test the application we just created, we need to start the OPC UA server. So here I start this OPC UA server simulator, which I have installed. So 
So this is the server. Here you find the address for the server. Here under settings you can set up some security policies. We can, in this example, I just use the default one. And here under configuration you can see the port etc. which we need to use inside our C Sharp application. So this is the address and this is the port for the OPC UA server. You can also go to to this um, file where you set up the different tags. You go to program files, integrated objects, and integrated objects OPC UA server simulator. And here under data you have these two CSV files in order to set up the different tags that you can use in this server. So I'll just click on this address space. And here you see the how we have the available tags, tag 1 to tag 20. And here you can change and configure the information or as I will uh, do in this tutorial, I will just use these default tags. So I just close this one and have now this OPC UA server running and I also use this OPC UA client tool in order to test our application and see that everything works as expected. So here is this uh, OPC UA client tool. I just copy the server address and then click on this connect button in order to connect to, to that specific OPC UA server simulator. I click the endpoint URL here, which is the address for the server. Click apply. So now I'm connected to this server, which is running here. And here you find the different tags that are available. I click on real time data and then you see we have tag 1, 2, 3 up to uh, tag 20, like this. And if I click on a specific tag, let's say tag number 7, and click right click, then you can either read or write uh, to this uh, specific tag. You can also click monitor in order to subscribe to data for this specific uh, tag. So now I have a test client here. I have the server here. So let's go back to Visual Studio. I click uh, on the run button here in order to open uh, the application. So basically now we have uh, three different applications. Here we have the OPC UA server simulator. Here we have an OPC UA client that we can use for test purposes. And here is the application we have created in Visual Studio using this OPC UA.NET SDK. So here I type a value 22, click right. I can also click on the same tag here. We are in this application, we are using tag number seven, which you see here in the Visual Studio Code. So tag number seven. I can right click on this tag, click read, and you see the value 22 has been written to the server. I can also click here on the read button, and as you see, we also get the same value here in this Visual Studio client. So basically, we have proved that we are able to create a basic application in Visual Studio and C Sharp that are communicating with an OPC UA server. So we can both write values and read values from, from a specific OPC UA server like this. I will also demonstrate the application we just created in Visual Studio and C Sharp using another OPC UA server. So we are was using this OPC UA server simulator, but I have also created an OPC UA server using LabVIEW. So here is the LabVIEW OPC UA server. I'll just uh, run it. And this is the um, server address and this is the tag that has been created on this server. And also I have created an OPC UA client uh, in, um, in LabVIEW that are writing 
and uh, reading values. So here we have one uh, OPC UI client that are writing to the server and another one that is reading from the server. So then I just copy the, the server address, go back to my Visual Studio project, I change the name of the server here which is no point not pointing on the OPC UA server simulator but a lab view server and also the tag name is factory dot temperature which I just copy into my Visual Studio project like this so here both in the write and read and this server address both in write and in read like this so then I just run this application so now I have not using this OPC UA server I'm using this LabVIEW OPC UA server instead first let's copy the address and go to this OPC UA client, click connect, enter the URL for the server, click apply, and then you will see here we have this factory dot temperature which is the tag and you can read and write values here in this OPC UA client and here is our Visual Studio application, let's just type 22, write I click, uh, I uh, run this OPC uh, UA client written in LabVIEW and you see I'm able to read the same value. I will also open this OPC UA client and click read here and you see the value 22 has been written to the server. And also here I can click read. Um, well, there's some problem here, and as you see, there's a spelling mistake here in the read event handler. The tag name is not uh, temperature, but uh, there's a temperature 7, it's from the old example. So I just remove it, run it once more, and then type 25 in this case, write, and then click read, and you see, I'm able to write to the server and read from the server. Um, this application that we have created works with any kind of OPC UA server. We have used two different servers. First we use this OPC UA server um, simulator. So we was able to make this application work with this OPC UA server simulator and then in the latest example we was creating an, or using an OPC UA server created with LabVIEW and we was able to connect to the server and both read, both write and read value from this server as well. So basically, let's go back to Visual Studio. So basically we have created a very simple application so this application has a text box where you can enter a value click write in order to write to the server and then you can click the read button in order to read a value from the server and basically here you see the necessary code we started by right click here on the project we added the necessary NuGet package Then we included uh, the package here or the namespace on top. Then we created an event handler for the different buttons and put in the necessary code in order to create an OPC client, connect to the server and write a value to the server. And also the same here, we was able to read a value from the server as well. 
So, so far we are was able to create a basic example in Visual Studio C Sharp where we created an application that uh, was writing a value to a specific OPC US server and then clicking on another button in order to retrieve a value from, from the OPC US server. So let's improve uh, this application. First, I have now created two uh, separate applications in Visual Studio. One application that are writing value writing a value to the OPC uh, US server and then another application that is reading uh, a value from the OPC US server. I have created some start and stop buttons in order to start communication with the server and stop communication with the server. I also have some formatting when it comes to number of decimals. Typically, uh, let's say we are writing and reading temperature values to the server or from the server, and we don't need 10 decimals in the number, so I've formatted the number of decimals. I also done some uh, improvements when it comes to the window. I have prevented it from resizing the window using some um, properties. So I set this form border style property to fixed single, and then maximi maximize the box to false in order to so the user cannot um, resize or maximize uh, the window. I'm also using a timer, so I'm now retrieving or generating some random numbers, simulating a, a sensor, let's say a temperature sensor, and then I write these values to the OPC server in uh, one application, and then retrieve these values in the other application and also in general some improvements has been made in the code. So now this is the setup. We are using the same OPC US server simulator. I have one application that are writing values to the server and another application that are reading the same values. So let's run these two applications in combination with this OPC US server simulator. So here we have the OPC UA server simulator and also have the, have the OPC UA client tool in order to make sure that everything works expect as expected. So then I connect to this um, OPC UA server simulator using this address, clicking apply and then you see now we have one client that are connected to this server. So this is the client. And then we go to Visual Studio. I have created two applications. This application are writing a specific uh, value to the server. So let's just run it. And then I will go give an overview of the code and the code structure afterwards. So this is the application that are writing values to the server. And then the second Visual Studio project. Let's run it. Now we have these four applications. So now let's start with this one, this OPC UA write client. I just click start in order to connect to the server and start uh, logging values to the OPC server. So soon this is set to log every 10 seconds. So now I'm just using a random generator in order to generate uh, decent value that simulates a temperature sensor and every 10 seconds a new value are presented here in the graphical user interface and sent to the server. And now you see we have two clients connected. So this one is this one and this OPC UA write is this one. And here we have this OPC UA read client. Let's start it. And this one reads values from the server every uh, twice a second. So you see the value that is written to the server here are also read in this client. And now you see we have three clients connected to the server. You can also use this OPC UA client tool. Uh, find the specific tag. We use the same tag, tag number seven. I can either read or write here or, or I can also click monitor, click OK and then you will find the same value here. So now 
let's see if this updated 25.26.63 and you see the value is been uh, updated here in this client and also in this client like this so let's just uh, stop these two applications so now i'm stopping this this client and then you see it disappear here in this this window i'm stopping this one and you see also this one is disappearing here and also I can disconnect using uh, this client uh, yes and now you see there is no clients that are connected to the opc us server but let's just stop these applications and go through the code in detail let's start with the um, write application So here you see the updated application for writing values to the server. I have a text box here where I show the values that are generated from this random generator, which is simulating a temperature sensor, buttons for start, the, conne uh, the connection to the server, and start uh, logging of uh, values from the sensor. And then a similar stop button. In, in addition to the value, I also present the timestamp. And when you start and stop here, I present a message to the user of this application. So just let's go through the code in detail. So here is the namespace you need. Here also I have created a timer, which you find here in the toolbox. Just search for timer and just drag it in. You use a timer uh, similar to as a while loop. So in by using a timer you are able to either write or read values from the server at specific interval so here in this uh, write application i specify that you're going to write to the server each 10 seconds 10,000 milliseconds and then inside the event handler for the timer i have i'm reading values from the sensor and then I write this specific value to to the OPC server. So I have created two uh, methods here in in this example. One method that is called read uh, sensor data. This one is just using the built-in random generator, which is part of Visual Studio and C Sharp. So this, here you see I'm using rand dot next double in a maximum value and a minimum value. I'm just using a basic formula here in order to generate a temperature value between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. And then this generated random value are put into a variable called sensor value. And then this text box is updated with this value with a proper number of decimals. Then I generate a timestamp which is presented here here and then I return the sensor value so then here I'm using this method and I'm returning the specific sensor value here and this specific sensor value are written to the server in this method so here opc write here I specify the tag name and then use this write node in order to write the specific sensor value to this specific tag. And also in the start button, I connect to the OPC server. I also start the timer and also present a message to the user. I logged, uh, logging started and connected to the OPC server. While in the stop button, I stop the connection to the OPC uh, UA server and present this message to the to the reader and also I'm stopping the timer. So basically this is the OPC UA write uh, client application. So let's go to the OPC UA uh, read application. It's a almost identical you have a start and stop button let's start with the start in the start event handler i start the timer 
connect to the server and present a message to the user in the stop button I'm stopping the timer disconnect from the server and present a message to the user so basically that's the um, start and stop button and you have the timer event that just using uh, or calling this uh, method called opc read which you find here it specify the tag name and it using this read node in order to read the specific value uh, for this specific tag I convert the value to and put it into a variable called the temperature and then finally I put the value from the temperature variable into this uh, text box here on the, on the user interface so basically that's the two applications one application that are writing values to the server and this other application that are reading values from the server so let's summarize. We started to create this uh, basic application in uh, Visual Studio on C Sharp, where we have both writing and reading in the same application, and we was testing it using this OPC UA Server Simulator. So we was writing a value we was specifying here, and we was making sure that the value was actually written to the server using this OPC UA client tool, and also here by clicking read OPC, we was able to read the same value. Next, we improved our application and divided into two different applications. One application that was writing values, and then it was simulating a temperature sensor using a random generator, and it was adding a timer. So it was able to write values as at specific intervals to the server. And this second application was able to read the same value at specific intervals. And then it was also uh, using buttons for starting the communication and start the logging and stop or disconnect from the server. Uh, so here you see the code for the OPC UA write application. And here you see the final code for the OPC UA read application. We can also make some more improvements. I will just shortly uh, see or demonstrate how you can specify uh, the server URL and the node ID from the user interface instead of hard code it in your uh, C sharp code. So here, um, updated uh, example. Here you have this OPC UA write application where you can specify the server URL and the tag that you are going to use. And then you, when you have specified the server address and the tag, you can click start in order to start logging and writing values to the server. And the same for the OPC UA read client. You specify the same server and the same tag, and then you start, click the start button in order to retrieve values uh, from the same server. So basically, this is the final application, uh, applications for writing values to the OPC server and reading values from the OPC server. Still, there are lots of improvements to that can be made. Uh, one possible change can be to also include the logging interval or specify the logging interval here in the graphical user interface. Here I have hard-coded the logging interval to be 10 seconds. And in this application, I hard-coded the logging interval to be 2 seconds. But it would be even better if you the user can specify uh, the logging interval by himself in the graphical user interface. Typically, you also want to add a chart either in this application or in this application or in both applications so you can see uh, the historical data. Typically, you also want to improve the application instead of using a random generator, you want to re retrieve data from a real sensor, for instance, a temperature sensor. Typically, you want to add units, etc. in your graphical user interface. And also, this OPC UA.NET uh, SDK ha has lots of more advanced features that you can use in your application, but those will not be demonstrated here. You can also use this OPC UA.NET SDK in order to create OPC UA uh, servers. 
So that's all. So good luck with OPC and creating OPC UA clients using Visual Studio and C Sharp. Thank you.